Mesopotamia, land of two rivers, the Euphrates and the Tigris. Descendants of the ancient cultures are Syriacs, Aramaic-speaking Christians. Nowadays, the Syriacs inhabit the upper Mesopotamia, which includes northern Iraq, Turkey and Syria, as well as Lebanon and Iran. At the end of the First World War, after the downfall of the Ottoman Empire, their life experienced major change. The newly defined borders divided their population into different states. This is uh, a village in southeast Turkey. It is a village of Media. The name of the village is uh, Ayn Wardo in Syriac. And uh, in Turkish they call it Gülgöze Köyü. Zeki Aydin has lived in Stockholm for 26 years. There he's doing his best to preserve the Syriac language and identity among his compatriots. And now in this area, uh, I mean all we call Turabdin. Turabdin is an uh, area where, where include Midyat and all the villages which are belong to Midyat. We call it Turabdin. That the meaning of Turabdin is Syriac is the mountain of servants of God. So that's the Syriac word. Uh, actually, uh, now all together we have around uh, uh, 2,000 people. The first persecution of Syriacs took place immediately after the First World War. Turkish nationalism was reinforced by tales of suffering refugees from the Balkans and Russia. Turkish neighbors attacked Syriac villages. Iwardo was among the few where the villages decided to defend themselves. After two months of siege, a ceasefire was agreed. In the 1970s, 40,000 Syriacs lived in the area. At the outbreak of hostilities between Kurds and Turks, they found themselves between the opponents. Villages were left without protection and most Syriac families emigrated. Syriacs speak Aramaic, the language spoken by Jesus himself. That is why they became acquainted with his teachings very early and adopted Christianity. Since they lived in the east, outside the borders of the Roman Empire, they were called the Eastern Christians. Around 100 AD, the Eastern Christians were joined by a part of Jewish Essene community at the Dead Sea. The Syriac Christians who read the Gospels in the original Aramaic accepted the Essenes' translations of the Old Testament. Syriacs are fond of telling their legends, which are full of wise bishops and saints that were peace-loving ascetics, who knowledgeably distinguished between good and bad. Some of the legends link the Syriac history to the life of Jesus. In the little village of Ha, there is a Mother of God church built by the three kings on their return from Bethlehem, where they paid homage to Jesus in the crib. ونشمه بنيامين بنيامين ايضا ومالفونو دي قريثو تحاح وكتلان بي قريثو لفت مون حصري قروثو وكتلان عسري ولي فتكوثن لي ما درشتو وعمراثي بينا حمش والحمش حصر شنيني بوثر متكون نفقي مو مكتب دو تركي كوثن لاركي لي ما درشتو كوما قريناني اولي شونو السريويو هنك ساعد لو كذعي واولي شونو السريويو ايذو بيذو كوما الفينا نعود اولي شونو اثي اولي مهويو وهناك استعاد كذا يول صيوثه دولة شو نفي ما هو خاصة زت كبعد يول في ولا شو نعنا دثي وإحنا استك هوينا نمارا زت ترد قدرنا دملفينا نولا شو نعنا دثي وهم هيا. There is a long history of education among the Syriac. In the town of Nusaybin, just off the Syrian border, the Archbishop of Mor Yokup and the poet Afrem established the famous Nusaybin school as early as in 325. Lessons included philosophy, law, theology, astronomy, and medicine. 
It was as early as in the second century that some Eastern Christians decided upon a hermetic way of life. Soon afterwards followed the appearance of monastic communities led by spiritual teachers who blessed the endeavors of the monks. Hermits held a unique attraction. They were visited by pilgrims from India, Greece and Rome. From the golden age of monasticism in the 5th century through the 13th century, individual monasteries in the upper Mesopotamia housed a thousand plus monks. The monks left for the east among the Turkish and Mongol tribes of the time, as well as to India and beyond it to China. The Saint Eugenius Monastery is the oldest monastery in this area. It is built in the 4th century, between 320 and 363. In this monastery, there were thousands of monks living here, praying here, fasting here, servicing the people here. So, they preached the Christianity here in this area. So, uh, St. Eugenius was called in our tradition the second Christ because if we are looking to his deeds and we compare it with what our Lord Jesus Christ did, uh, they look like. So for us, Saint Eugenius is the second Christ. Uh, and this monastery was also in the history called the second Jerusalem. The monks inhabited cells chiseled out of the rocky hillside, completely renouncing material possessions, lacking sleep and denying themselves food. Some of them even went without clothes and others ate only a few times a week. It was in 1970s that the last monk died and the monastery was left deserted. In 2011, two monks, Yoyakin and Aho, returned from Great Britain where they completed their studies of theology. We are praying three times a day here. We are celebrating the Holy Mass on Sundays in this monastery and the local people in this desert. Uh, of course, we have three villages of our community here in this uh, desert. They are sharing us with their children, with their family, and we are uh, celebrating the Holy Eucharisty in this uh, monastery. By the side of the arterial road leading from the town of Midiat to the east lies Saleh or Bari Stepe, today's largest Syriac village. Most inhabitants make their living from farming. In the middle of the clustered village there is a church. Just like other buildings, it is surrounded by a high wall that delineates the inner courtyard. The villagers gather in the church several times a day, since Christianity and the Aramaic language form the basis of the Syriac identity. <laughs> Although nowadays most Syriacs from Turkey are displaced all over the world, they continue to regard Upper Mesopotamia as their homeland. As witnessed by the written records in Aramaic, their churches have stood here for 2,000 years. The Syriac community in Turkey has not been granted the status of a national minority yet. For this reason, the Syriacs do not enjoy equal rights in schools, hospitals or cultural institutions 
as for example Jews and Armenians. The year 2012 saw the establishment of the Syriac Union in Turkey that interconnects seven associations in the territory of Tur Abdin. The Union is active in cultural, social and political domains. Its members prepared the proposals for adoption of constitution which observed the rights of the Syriacs. They cooperate with other civil organizations and churches and act as a partner in dialogue with government institutions. The famous monastery Mor Hananyo lies in the vicinity of the town of Mardin, the administrative center of Tur Abdin. The monastery encompasses several churches and a crypt containing tombs of patriarchs and bishops. Near the altar of the central church, there is a beautifully carved throne of the patriarch. It is here that the official patriarch's seat was between 1923 and 1932. Turkey Uh, <laughs> The little village of Kafro or El Begendi was deserted by its inhabitants and the houses were destroyed in the conflicts between the Turkish army and the Kurdish rebels. I bin zurückgekommen zu meiner Heimat, dass ich meine Kultur, meine Sprache weiterführen kann, weil jeder Mensch hat äh, oder kann äh, seine nationale Werte in eigene Heimat weiter ausüben. They were encouraged to return by the assurances that the government would assist in renewal of the village. Nevertheless, the villagers are faced with numerous problems, from childcare to transport of children to school, from control of public services to maintaining the national identity of the community. Und im Jahr 2006, dann sind wir zurückgekommen, einige von uns mit Kindern, einige Frauen und Mann und so weiter. Aber insgesamt sind wir zwölf Familien zurück. Wir sind jetzt im Dorf zwölf Familien, so um die 40 Personen. Aus Deutschland, Schweiz und eine Familie aus Schweden. We need uh, to be equal with everybody. That's, we don't find something special for us, only to be like others. The Syriacs initiated a dispute before the European Court of Human Rights. In spite of some declarations to the effect that the position of minorities and their institutions in Turkey is to improve, in 2008 and in 2012, the Turkish court confiscated a large part of land of the monastery Mor Gabriel. The monastery is a spiritual center of Syriacs in Turkey, which sustains the flame of Syriac Christianity. It is also the seat of Timothy Aktas, the Archbishop of the Syriac Orthodox Church. The situation of this monastery reflects the present and the future of Syriacs. 
Christians in the Upper Mesopotamia. <laughs> 